hello once again and um, welcome along thanks for tuning in and um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, post season training now lady here for regular viewers will be familiar with lady um, lady is now approximately I think she's around 16 months old and um, she's a super dog a natural gun dog, a natural hunting dog. And she now has one season effectively under her belt, so to speak, so she knows what the game actually is. And um, whilst I've spent quite a lot of time training her um, before the season, she's weak in a couple of areas. One in particular that I'm going to um, work on this morning. Now, the recall, um, when she was very young, I started teaching her the recall, and uh, she was very responsive 99% of the time. Now, as she's learned a little bit, she understands that um, if she's out a certain distance, I can't catch hold of her, so there's times when she'll ignore the recall. So this morning, I'm going to start the process of um, remedying that problem and the second thing I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to start the process of training her on the stop whistle now she's never had any training whatsoever on the stop whistle so this will be an entirely new thing and again like all training it's a process and it won't be accomplished in the very first lesson so right behind the camera here I've there's a field and I've deliberately chosen this field because it's um, relatively small which means that lady here can't go much beyond maybe 200 yards from me. Now I much prefer that she stayed around 100 yards to 150 or thereabouts and that she sh should respond every time when I recall her. If I'm hoping today that she will ignore me at some point so I can demonstrate what I do to correct that. So we'll go into field now and um, let's see how it goes. Lady. Now this is the field and um, it's quite windy today so um, there may be some wind noise on the, um, the sound so um, you know, there's nothing much I can do about that so you'll have to bear with me on that. So Lady is here now and um, I'm going to let her go, she's going to be mad to go because she hasn't been out for a couple of days now so she's really going to push it I think. Now the wind is at my back at the moment which um, I'm going to walk in that direction there and then I'm going to turn and come back into the wind. So uh, walking with the wind, I'm just going to allow her basically to burn off a bit of steam and let her run around and basically do what she likes for the time being. And then I'm going to start recalling. So, lady, get on. Come on. She's found scent already. Come on. Good girl. Try and turn her now. She turned perfectly that time. Yeah, and a perfect turn again. And a perfect turn again. So she's behaving herself impeccably here. So now what I'm going to do is, on the next turn, I'm going to attempt to call her into me. first ever time she's heard the whistle like that and that will be eventually the stop whistle I'm going to be stopping lady by using that whistle command hopefully uh, over, over all kinds of distances irrespective of how far away she'll be 
I want to be able to stop her. So again, now I'm just going to let her, let her hunt on, recall her again, and introduce the stop pussy. Get out. Hey! Now she has ignored me. Hey! Because she's found scent. I'm running. Get here! Get here! Get here! Get here! Get here! Sit! Now she knows I'm not happy with her, I can see by. Hey! So I'm just letting that sink in there now. I'm just letting that little. I've given out to her. I've, I've, I've raised my voice and I've let her know that I'm not happy. So I'm going to allow that little lesson to sink in and then I'm going to let her hunt on once more. Get up! Now I've actually succeeded in stopping her. She's approximately two paces from me, maybe six or eight feet. And um, I've succeeded in stopping her. Now it's the very first attempt, so I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to let her hunt on another bit here now. I'm going to bring her out to my right hand side, away from the hedge, because she has too much interest in the hedge. Ladies. I did stop whistle again when I caught her in this time. Stop! Hey! Sit! Now, it's early days of course. Hey, hey, hey. For the stop whistle, but like I said, it's a process and we will get there. When she gets any scent or sees birds, she loses the run of herself and um, basically becomes deaf. So that will have to be corrected over time. Today is just the start. So I'm going to go in this direction now in order to keep her away from where she wants to go. You can see her keeps, she keeps looking back towards that hedge because that's where the scent is at. I want her to stay away from it. This is why it's important when you're training a dog that has such a high hunting drive during the training process to keep her away from scent. If you can find a place where there isn't any scent, if you have a field where there is no scent, then that's the ideal situation. But there tends to be scent in most fields, particularly around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pull her away from here and bring her back towards my car, which is over here, where there's unlikely to be as much scent as, as over here. So in order to get the control. Lady, get on. Hey, hey, hey! She wanted to head for the ditch straight away. When she's near me, it's very easy to turn her. She keeps looking over there. Get on, get on. Hey, sit. Again, introducing the stop whistle. It'll take time. Good girl, get on. It's very difficult to contrive a perfect situation. Hey, hey! You know, you notice I'm raising my hand as well. The stop whistle and the raised hand are the same, they're the same command. So in the event in the future, we'll say where it's very windy and maybe she can't hear the whistle, the raised hand should be enough to stop her at distance. So the two commands combine for the moment so that she gets to understand that the stop whistle and my raised hand mean the same thing. So now I'm just going to bring her 
back here to my right again, just back across this way, and um, let her hunt a bit. And again, like I say, it's a, a process, it's going to take some time. Lady, get up. Perfect turn. Girl! Good girl. Hey, 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 hey! Now she was heading for the hedge again and I turned her with the sound of my voice, which is good enough. Good girl, get on. Hey, hey! Get on here, come on! Lady! Now I'm gonna call her back into me. And again, try to stop it. Hey! Get in here! Get in here! She's found some kind of scent. And she's half set there. Probably some little bird around her at some stage. Lady! Get here! Get here! Get here! Hey! Get here! Snipe. Now she's just taken off after the snipe. She knows what a snipe is because I've shot quite a few over her. So as soon as she heard him, she took off. Now I'm going to allow her that indiscretion for the time being. Because it's unreasonable to expect a dog to recall when they're on a very strong scent or when they're actually in the process of chasing a bird. Although that can too be accomplished. Get here, get here. Hey, sit, sit. Now I've stopped her at a greater distance again. She's approximately five paces from me. Hey, which is a good accomplishment in a very short time. So I'm going to leave, hey, 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 sit, I'm going to leave it at that now just for the time being and then I'm going to allow that little lesson to be absorbed, sit. That's it for today, that's um, been out approximately 15 minutes and um, we've accomplished quite a bit. So now that was a very short training session, only 15 minutes or thereabouts and I accomplished quite a lot. I've introduced the stop whistle, very important in my view, and um, also I've started to work on the recall issue. Now, I believe that lady is relatively easy to train and um, I'll accomplish those things in very short order. Now, a lot of people with setting and pointing dogs, they just allow them to do whatever they like and um, that's fine if that's what you want to do and have your dog do whatever it likes and maybe the kind of countryside that you hunt in maybe that's the, the sort of dog that you want but in the sort of countryside that I hunt in not only that I like to have control over my dog at all times in any case but in the type of countryside I hunt I need to have a lot of control over my dog for many reasons but principally that um, the fields I don't want the, I don't want the dog leaving the field I'm in and hunting the field next door because that's, that's absolutely no use to me. I need the dog to stay in the field that I'm in. As well as that, 
roads, if the dog is heading for a road, I want to be able to recall the dog. There's obvious dangers on the road, I want to be able to recall the dog, I want to be able to stop the dog. If the dog is heading in a direction I don't want it to go in, or if I simply just want to recall the dog to go to, to put her on the leash and go someplace else. So that's the reason I train all my dogs to stop on the stop whistle. Very important in where I hunt and the, the area in which I hunt it because we have a mixture of farmland and roads essentially and some of the roads are very busy and um, it's, I've had many people contact me over the years to tell me that their dog had run out on the road and been hit with a car and either severely injured or killed thereby ending their hunting career. So that's it, that's um, like I say it's an ongoing process the next time out I'm hoping that the lessons learned today, she will remember them, I've no doubt, and I will, uh, the stop whistle, I consider I'll have, a teacher to stop whistle, maybe in three or four lessons I'll have to stop whistle any distance. So, that's it for today, for today. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in, if you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button because I do videos like this all the time on dog training and other subjects. So, Thanks for watching once again. I guess, uh, when I can't reach that, I'm Keir Zorella. Slang of oil.